YouTube, what is going on? Welcome to another episode of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. A quick thank you for being here for a few minutes today and for all the amazing support. You guys already know you're part of the best damn community here on YouTube, without a doubt. So in my last video, I got a comment from a relatively newer stacker who said she was concerned uh, about the quote-unquote great reset, precious metals confiscation, and whatnot. Uh, she'd been perusing the shock channels here on YouTube and was genuinely concerned and a little bit scared. And she asked if I thought she should go all in on metals due to the impending uh, doom, for the lack of a better word. <laughs> and this is one of the biggest reasons I have so much disdain for those channels. Uh, they're influencing newer stackers and not always in the right way. Uh, yes, it's important and beneficial to stack metals, but don't do it out of fear. Do it out of necessity and planning. Anyway, long story short, I gave her an answer with my own opinion, but I thought it'd be a solid idea to cover that on today's video, uh, and that's confiscation. Now, it's a fairly important topic since, well, history has already shown confiscations in the past, like back in 1933. But could history repeat itself in this modern age? Well, we're going to talk about it. And all that said, you know it. Let's freaking roll it. All right, so let's really briefly review that confiscation back in 1933 for a little bit of background story. We'll do this really quickly. Now, most of you already know the story, but here's the extremely slimmed down version. We all know the Great Depression ran from about 1929 to 1939 and that the United States was mired deeply in desperate times. Now, in all actuality, that time period represented some of the harshest adversity faced by Americans since the Civil War. Now, when 1933 rolled around, those conditions motivated U.S. citizens and companies to make a run on the banks with a goal of converting their dollars into gold. And as a result, huge amounts of gold disappeared from the Federal Reserve at an incredible rate. And that put the U.S. government into a panic. Now, in response, in response, the Emergency Bank Act was passed. Shortly after that, President Franklin Roosevelt issued the infamous Executive Order 6102, which effectively enabled the government to seize the gold of U.S. citizens. Now, basically, they were required to deliver all gold coin, gold bullion, whatever they had to the nearest bank before the 28th of April, 1933, where they'd be compensated a little over $20 an ounce for their troubles. <laughs> uh, the only gold they could actually keep was a few uh, collectibles and family heirlooms and whatnot. And that's an insanely brief synopsis of the Great Depression. Moving on. So that brings us to the main point of this video. And the question is, could the U.S. government seize gold again or even silver? Well, I've got good news and i got bad news for you as an answer. I'll give you the bad news first. In short, yes, the government could absolutely seize the gold of its citizens again, or firearms, or any, damn near anything else it wants. Real question to ask is, would they actually do it? And that brings us to the good news, and it all boils down to this. In a practical sense, U.S. government doesn't have much incentive or need to seize gold. Why is that? Well, the current estimated holdings of gold among private holders in the U.S. would only provide the federal government with three weeks of funding. Three weeks. Folks, it takes money to run the U.S. federal government, uh, an enormous amount of money, actually. Just last year, their budget was $6.13 trillion, or $17 billion a day. <laughs> uh, in other words, it just wouldn't be worth it for the U.S. to hit us with a seizure of gold for such a small return. And that's not even considering the fact that it might take Hercules himself to get that job done. Right, right. Rule number 15, a hero is only as good as his weapon. <laughs> Yeah, that's about how well it might go because there'd likely be a guaranteed resistance by the American public and it's just not worth the efforts. This isn't the 1930s anymore. Uh, people are more fed up with the government than ever before. Uh, it's also important to remember that the U.S. has no real need to seize precious metals because the dollar uh, is no longer tied to the gold standard. It's gone. And the government can just set the value of the dollar to every, any level it wants, basically. So the need to seize and control the gold, in other words, does not exist. It was important to the government back in 1933 because the dollar was interchangeable with gold, but we know that's no longer a factor. So without any financial motive for wanting the gold, the only reason a potential confiscation might occur is if the government decides to put an end to the private market of gold, for example. Uh, you never know. I mean, in some wacky politician's mind, limiting the public's access to gold could be a strategy for increasing the value of the dollar. Take away the gold, and we'd have no choice but to invest in and rely on the dollar. Ugh. But that scenario is extremely unlikely. Again, just imagine the resistance Americans would pose. If the government wants to avoid a potential revolution from the people, well, it knows it has to tread very carefully in these crazy times. 
You never know. Might be a record number of boating accidents reported with all metals lost to the bottom of the ocean. Strange how that works, huh? Un freaking believable. Now we're getting ready to close this video out, but before we do, let's cover two more commonly held beliefs related to confiscation. And that's how silver and numismatics would factor in. Now, proven collectibles might prove to be exempt again in a confiscation, but we just don't know how one would pan out in today's day and age, right? Who knows? Uh, who knows what might be on the table? So is your silver safe? Well, maybe, and maybe not. A lot of folks assume silver would be exempt since past confiscations focused on gold. But what many don't know is that a year after the 1933 gold confiscation order, on August 9, 1934, Roosevelt signed Executive Order 6814 that, quote, required the delivery of all silver to the United States for coinage, end quote. And citizens were paid an amount of $1.29 an ounce for their troubles. Good times, good times. Uh, folks, the truth is no one truly knows what a modern day uh, confiscation would encompass. What we do know is this. Very few of us would put it past our government doing anything to meet its own needs at the expense of our citizens. We choose elected officials for the people, by the people, but it seems like far too many of those in power forgot why they were in office in the first place, and they go into self-preservation mode. It is what it is. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Enough of this. Anyway, that's my opinion on modern-day confiscation. I doubt that in today's age it's even worth it for the U.S. government to consider it, uh, for a number of reasons, but just like anything else our folks do up there on the hill, you just never know. You, you just don't. So if you're worried about the potential of this happening, in my opinion, it's an extremely unlikely scenario. Not impossible, mind you, just extremely unlikely. So just keep focusing on your stack, and please, please, take those shock value YouTube channels with a grain of friggin' salt. Those videos sell clicks and views, and the content creators that upload that muck make plenty of money for their efforts. Do your research, stay calm, and stack on. All right, all right, folks, there you have it. Now, this video could have been a lot longer, but I also know that shorter is better when it comes to YouTube, right? <laughs> so what are your thoughts on a modern-day confiscation? Are you afraid of it happening? Is there any scenario you can think of that would trigger one? Again, it's not impossible, just highly unlikely. Anyway, be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. You guys know I love going through them, so make sure you sound off. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. If you made it this far, well, kudos to you. I'll definitely catch up with you in the next episode. But in the meantime, ooh yeah, you know what's up. What do you want to do with your life? I want to stack. Right, get stacked. Stay safe and be well, everyone. I am out of here. Peace, folks. Have a fantastic and safe week. You still here? It's over. Go home. Oh. oh, yes, and what was that beginning, middle, and end part again? <laughs>